Dear student, I am Dr. Shahili Karmokar from Department of Chemistry, School of Science and Humanities, Satyabhama Institute of Science and Technologies. Today we are going to learn about Jablonski diagram, fluorescence and phosphorescence spectroscopy. First learn what is spectroscopy. Spectroscopy is a bunch of science which investigate the interaction between matter with electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation consists various rays like gamma ray, x-ray, UV visible ray, ultraviolet ray, IR ray, microwaves ray and radio waves. Mainly we will be focusing in UV visible region here. Before we start the photoluminescence spectroscopy we should know some of the terms. We all know that electron has two different spin clockwise and anti-clockwise. When two different spin close together and pair up they make singlet state whereas when the similar spin pair up they create triplet state. Why so? Because when opposite spin are pairing up that means their value plus half and minus half so net spin will be zero and we know that for spin multiplicity calculation we use the formula 2s plus 1. If s is 0, spin multiplicity for singlet state will be 1. For triplet state, the value of net spin will be 1. Plus of plus plus of it will be 1 or minus of plus minus of it will be also 1. So, the spin multiplicity if we calculate by using the formula 2s plus 1, it will come as 3. That is why we call it triplet. These two terms we will be using in our Jablonski diagram. Let us start. What is Jablonski diagram? It is fundamentally a energy diagram. Polish scientist Alexander Jablonski spent his entire life to doing research on absorbance and emission. He has formulated the Jablonski diagram. Here S0 is the ground electronic state. S1, S2 are the singlet excited state, first singlet excited state and second singlet excited state where this T1 is the first triplet excited state. In between any electronic state you can see there are various vibrational levels are present. When a molecule is bombarded with electromagnetic radiation it absorbs the energy and goes to the higher excited state. This process is called absorbance. The lifetime of this process is 10 to the power minus 15 seconds. So, it is a very fast process. Once this molecule is in excited state, it is always try to relax and come back to ground state because the stability in ground state is the highest. From this excited state, it can do the vibrational relaxation to come back to lower vibrational level. This is a non-radiative decay channel. This lifetime is around 10 to the power minus 14 to 10 to the power minus 11 second. Another similar non-radiative decay channels are internal conversion. In this process, molecules will move from second excited state to another excited state, first excited state. Similar process like vibrational relaxation, it can come back to the lowest vibrational level of first electronic excited state. From these first excited states, if molecules come back to ground state with radiative pathway, then this phenomena is termed as fluorescence. This is a prompt emission process. Whereas, similarly, after this photon absorption, if molecule goes to higher excited state, and from this singlet higher excited states, by vibrational relaxation, it is coming to the lowest vibrational level of the first singlet state. From this state, if it goes to triplet state by a non-radiative decay channel called intersystem crossing, then this will not a permitted process. It is a forbidden process because here spin flipping is occurring. That is why it is taking longer time comparatively other non-radiative decay channel like internal conversion. From these triplet states, if molecules comes 
to the lowest vibrational level by various non-radiative decay channel like vibrational relaxation and from this lowest vibrational level if it is come back to the ground state with radiative pathway then this phenomena is termed as phosphorescence. Now here two important things to remember that the absorption energy will be always higher than our fluorescence energy. We can call this fluorescence and phosphorescence emission. Emission wavelength will be higher compared to absorbance and vice versa energy of absorption will be higher compared to fluorescence. The wavelength difference between absorption and emission this is called Stokes shift and fluorescence lifetime is less compared to phosphorescence. Fluorescence lifetime generally in nanosecond range in the range of 10 to the power minus 9 to 10 to the power minus 7 seconds. Whereas phosphorescence is the delayed emission it takes longer time because their spin flipping occur this is a forbidden process. So phosphorescence lifetime comes in millisecond range the range of phosphorescence lifetime is 10 to the power minus 4 to 10 to the power minus 1. Now this fluorescence and phosphorescence all together this process is called photoluminescence spectroscopy. This photoluminescence spectroscopy has myriad of applications in our daily life like we use for light display OLED organic light emitting diets for various sensing applications and one very important applications of photoluminescence spectroscopy is solar cell and other than this in biomedical fields also it is have significance applications. Thank you students for watching this.